1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, we're going to be starting at verse 12. Praise God. And I started this message last week. Amen? Amen. What is man? What is man that thou art mindful of? But on, on part two, I changed it a little bit, and I rewrote the title, The Greatest Man Who Ever Lived. Amen. My God. <laughs> we knew some great men that have gone, lived, and died. And the world had known these men. But the greatest man who ever lived, what's his name? Jesus. Oh, come on, say it like you mean it. Jesus. The world has known great men, scholars, known men of educated staff, medical staff, uh, scientific community, and have left the mark on the world. But the greatest man who ever lived was the man who died for you and me. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't that wonderful to know that Jesus died for you? Amen. Come on, somebody. Isn't it know that he paid the price in full? My God, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to be starting at verse 12, but I, I talked about to teach on illustration about who is man, and thou art mindful of him. Songs, I think, chapter 8, uh, verse 4 was that beginning of that. And it's important that we understand that Jesus just didn't come here just to perform miracles, but he came here that you might have a right to the tree of life. Now, the world has got a lot of men in it. And the word man has been used oftentimes. We hear people today in the sports community, you know, come on, man. We hear about the Tuskegee Airmen. You heard about the rain man, the snow man, the space man, the moon man. You heard about the front man, the middle man, and the end man. Are the last man. You heard about the earth man, the snake man. You've had delivery men. You heard about the sand man. You heard about a man's man. You heard about the inside man, the iron man, the wolf man, the superman, the batman, the comet man, the candy man, the anchor man, the weather man, the news man, the post man. Shall I go on? The mail man, the milk man, the handy man, the reporter man, right? The paper man, the white man, the black man, the red man, the yellow man, the class man, the old man, the young man. Come on, somebody. The little man, the soul man. You heard about the cave man, the spider man, the aqua man. You've been in weddings, you heard about the best man. And then you heard about two and a half men. Oh, come on, somebody. Shall I go on? You heard about the tally man, tally me banana. You heard about the visible, invisible man. You heard about the cellophane man. Why you call him cellophane man? Because you can see right through him. You heard about the rifle man. Rifle man Fleming, the rifle man Chuck Connors. Come on, somebody. You heard about manhunt? And then you heard people use the expression, won't you just man up? Amen. Look at somebody and say, won't you just man up? Won't you just man up? <laughs> <laughs> but through all the names we can call men, God said, what is man that we are mindful of? But yet, in the process of time, God created holy men and righteous men and women, and they called them just men, holy men, righteous men, faithful men, men that were loyal. Amen? Amen. And Paul, who was once on the opposite side of the gospel, but God saved him. God called him. Come on, somebody. One day on the road of Damascus, where he came down with a written document to persecute all the Christians of the household of faith. But Paul finally got turned around. How did he get turned around? Because Jesus had to turn him around. Come on, somebody. He was an educated man. He was a, a great scholar uh, that went all the way up to Antioch to study on a great man who was a black leader at the time. Paul understood the doctrine not only as a, a leader in the time that he lived in, but he understood how powerful the doctrine was to mankind. So he left you and I an epistle uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. 
He understood how powerful it was. And as I was talking last week about when God created man out of the clay, out of the dust of the earth, not only did God create him out of the dust of the earth, God had to make him 3D. You, somebody say 3D. 3D. You see, we want to watch TV in 3D, but when God made man, he made him 3D. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor? He made him body, soul, and spirit. That makes him 3D. Ain't that right? Yeah. Ain't you body, soul, and spirit? Yeah. All right. So now, if we understand this, that God uh, broke it down last week, and I, I spent a great deal of time trying to explain the mind, body, and soul, that everything that God created, when God hoover over man and made man out of the dust and the clay of the earth, the Bible said that God, when he finished Man, he had to hover over him and blew it, blow the breath of life. That made man, the body was there, but it didn't have no breath. So when he blew his breath, man came to be a spirit. And then when man, God blew the breath of life, man came to be a living soul. Mind, body, and soul. Come on, somebody. So if you're going to love the Lord, he said, love him with all your heart. Love him with all your mind. Love him with all your soul. You can't love God half the way, either all the way or no way at all. Come on, somebody. You got to love him and put your heart on the line. You got to trust him for whatever you're going through. Somebody say amen. amen. We're living in the last days. You can't put your trust in man. You got to put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Prepare your heart. Prepare your life with the word of God. And remember, don't cry, God. Just be patient and wait on him. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, don't cry, God. Just be patient and wait on him. Sometimes we're in the heaven and we want things in the heaven. We live in an instant society where we want things right here, right now, right away. But God is telling us to be patient and wait on him. And when you're waiting on him, don't try to cry on him. You ever been somewhere at the restaurant or been somewhere at the motor vehicle registry and people are so anxious to get to the place, they crowd you. They look at all in your wallet. They watching your phone. They all up in your business. They crowd you. You feel pressured. Come on, somebody. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't try to crowd God because God can't be crowded. You might want to be patiently and wait on him. Turn around and look at somebody and say, don't crowd God. My God, just wait on him. See, we got to prepare our hearts to wait on him. Amen? When God created everything you got, he gave you five senses, a heart and a brain. And thank God for common sense. Somebody said, thank God for common sense. You see, your best doctor is not the doctor you go see to over the hospital. You're your best doctor. Because ain't nothing the doctor can do for you until you open up your mouth and tell him. Come on, somebody. In his 28 years of experience of learning the medical field, he's no fool being there, so he know a little something, and you will be advised and be wise to take his advice. Somebody say amen. amen. If he tell you to eat right, eat right. Right. If he tell you to, come on somebody, to exercise, get that little bit of exercise. Right. If it ain't no way but walking around the corner to the store and coming back, get out and about. Come on somebody. Go ahead and do for yourself as long as you can. My God, because God created everything about you, your joints, your muscles, your eyes, your ears. Come on somebody. All your inside. And remember last week I was talking about the God we serve, he had to start on the inside and work on the outside. He had to create, when he looked at your skeleton, come on somebody, and he put that flesh on the bone and created all the organs, the spinal cord, the sciatic nerves, when he created all the muscles and the tissue, when he started with the cell, the structure, and the nucleus nuclei, when he looked into your uh, enzymes and looked at all your genes and created both male and female. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. God didn't make no mistakes. It's a rare, it's a rare child that was born with both sexes. I knew a young lady once. I grew up in the project in Walnut Terrace, uh, and my sister was the best of friends with her. And she didn't know no better, but she showed my sister her private parts, and she had both male and female organs. Oh, you don't want to say. My sister cut her relationship off with her because she was scared of her because it was abnormal, but she finally knew that she had her monthly cycle. She knew that she was a, a woman. 
Come on, somebody. There's something that God put in a man, he didn't put in a woman. Come on, somebody. Ain't no man will ever have no child. You might well forget that idea. And ain't no man and woman will ever have an Adam apple with big, rough knees. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that kind of preacher. I'm trying to set the groundwork in. If you see a woman here with a big old Adam apple, there ain't no woman. That's a man. Come on, somebody. My God. You know, you start worrying now. I don't care what kind of operations and surgery they have to correct it. Come on, somebody. You see, man has always played the game of utopia. One, in one race and one specific uh, religion and one specific thing. Man has always played that with God. And the Bible teaches us a deep subject matter. And I want you to see it this morning over in Genesis. If you don't mind turning with me before we start uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 6. I want you to see that he even pricked God's own heart. I want you to see it for yourself. See, if I preach it to you, teach it to you, you can say, okay, but when you see it for yourself, Amen. Genesis chapter 6, you got it? Everybody start reading at verse 1 in the name of Jesus on 1, 2, 3. If you got Genesis, say amen. 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 Chapter 6, you got it? Yeah. Verse 5, everybody, we're going right up to verse 8. 1, 2, 3, start reading. You have to thank God for Noah. Yeah. The Bible said it pricked God's heart that he ever, after all the marvelous work that God created man, he said it repented him yes. that he ain't ever made man. Can you imagine God saying that? Amen. That man's imagination got so wicked in verse 5 that every imagination of his thought and his heart was only evil continuously. Can't you see it happening like in the days of Noah? Can't you see it happening today? Even more so because we have Facebook. We have Snapchat. Amen. Come on, somebody. We have, uh, what do you call it, YouTube? Amen. Come on, somebody. We got all this modern technology that man can look at and see and get his eye and his mouth full of things and look at things and observe things and say, wow. For 15 seconds of flame, wow. Amen. And they're doing everything. They're trying everything. They're encouraging people to try globally. And even Facebook Suckerman is moving on to the next level. He know what he's doing. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> Who's Zuckerman? He's the guy that created Facebook. Uh -huh. He got in trouble with that. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Trying to start a one-world system. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But the whole while, he was selling your personal business to somebody else. Yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you, out of all the things that man, God made, man has taken what God has given, the knowledge he's given him, and instead of doing good, he's done evil with it. And like in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus himself will come. But I'm here to tell you, Moses uh, was a great man. Noah was a great man. But the world's greatest man is Jesus himself. Why? Because of what he did for you and me. No other man could have ever done. You see, Jesus wasn't the only one that was crucified. He wasn't the only one that was beat and scourged. But he was the only one that died and rose again. That you and I might have a right to the tree of life. He did it for you, and he did it for me. You ought to give him the praise for that this morning. But the Bible said God was going to wipe out the earth. But he found, but Noah was walking around. Now, y'all don't know this, but Noah was an alcoholic. Oh, um, y'all don't want to hear that kind. You see, that don't mean he was perfect. That means he had some issues. But he was smart enough to build God's ark. That don't mean he got so drunk he forgot about God. Come on, somebody. But he got in trouble oftentimes with God. But God saw something in him. He found grace in the eyesight of God. And yet he was considered a great man. 
but he was the world's greatest man. Amen. It was Christ. Amen? Amen. So what is Paul saying in chapter 12? Turn back with me in chapter 12 huh, of 1 Corinthians and starting in verse 12. He talks about the body. For as the body is one and many members, and all members are one body, being many are one body. One body, so also is in Christ. Amen. We're many members, but we're one body. Somebody say, thank, thank you, Jesus. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we Jew, Gentile, or whether we born or free, being all made to drink of one spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you drink drinking of any other spirit other than the Holy Spirit, you're drinking the wrong spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, people say, what are you saying? There are many spirits. Amen. Come on, liquors and spirits, wine. Amen. You ever see that sign on the side of the road that said wine, liquor, and spirits? Amen. So whatever's in that bottle, that spirit in that bottle. Amen. I did a funeral last week, and the wife told, uh, told everybody the man that was buried said he liked bat juice. I said, no, no, no. Not, that was one of my favorite. Bacardi rum? Never mind, never mind, never mind. Bad juice. Bad juice and grapefruit. Bacardi rum and coke. Come on, don't y'all look at me like that. Act like you ain't never had nothing to drink. For those who have drank, amen. But today, we see signs on the road. Come on, somebody said, wine, liquor, and spirits. And if you're drinking out of that liquor store, you're drinking in the spirit. That's why some people, they're all right until they start drinking. They get to drinking, they want to fight everybody. They want to knock everybody out. Come on, somebody. They get to drinking. They didn't lie before they start drinking. Uh, and even when they start drinking, they never told the truth, but they start drinking, they tell on everybody. Okay, all right. Now, now you see what they're saying about spirits, drinking the same spirit. But when you drink of the Holy Ghost, when you drink of the world's greatest man, that spirit in which he gave unto you and me, it will comfort you and keep you through all your trials and through all your tribulation, even in these last and evil days. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 15 says, if the foot mm -hmm. shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, mm -hmm. is it therefore not of the body? Sure it is. Yes. God created it. If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not the body? Is therefore not of the body? Sure he is. Verse 17 says, the whole body were an eye. If the whole body was a big old eye, where would the hearing be? You just have, and some people in the church are big old eyes. They just see everything, but they don't hear nothing. And you got some people that have big old ears in the church. They hear everything, but they can't see nothing. Okay, I'm going to get on your nerve in a minute because y'all ain't saying amen. He says, the whole body where I are, where all the hearing. If the whole were hearing, where is the smelling? There's some big noses in the church. And they ain't talking about because we got Afro-American. I'm talking about, I'm an Afro-American. I got a big old nose. They ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm talking about always smelling somebody else's affair. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, Paul know what he was talking about. But now, fact, but he goes on in verse 18 and says, but now have God set, didn't God set huh, the members of every one of them in the body as it pleases him? Amen. God is the one that puts your nose where it is and your eyes where it is. True, true. Can you imagine if your eyes was in the place of your, your ears and your ears was in your forehead? You'd be a funny-looking creature, wouldn't you? True, true, true. My God. But God is the one that sets your face up. Because God said, I'm gonna, we're going to make man in our own image. And didn't he say so? Verse 19 said, and they were all the one member, then where's the body? Uh huh. Verse 20 said, now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eyes cannot say to the hands, your eyes can't say to the hand, we don't have no need of thee. Now again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. You see, your hand needs your feet, and your feet need your face, and your face needs your, come on somebody, your shoulders. Amen. 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 True, true. Verse 22 said, no, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or weak, they're necessary. You might not put a lot of emphasis on your feet or your hand because you use your fingers and your digits and your joints all the time. Until arthritis show up. Amen. Come on, somebody. My Lord. 
Verse 23 says, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon thee, we store more abundance. Yeah. Honor, your shape. Amen. Come on, somebody. Your, 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 your fatigue. Come on, somebody. Amen. Your beauty in your face. Some people put so much abundance on there. The world beautify the outward appearance. Amen. And our uncommonly parts have more abundant commonliness. Amen. Don't take your legs and your feet for granted. Yes, amen. Let me tell you this sort of record. So I'm gonna throw this in for free. You gotta take good care of your feet and your muscles and your legs. That's true. Yes. Because the first thing to go as you get older is that you begin to lose strength in your legs. Mm -hmm. If you can keep your legs and your muscles and your feet and your ankles and your legs and the tissue strong, the rest of your body will respond in a positive way. Yes. Because the blood got to pump blood way down to the big toes, yes. way down to the bottom of the feet. And it's got to come all the way back up, and that's going to take a strong heart. So if you got good, strong leg, whether you swim or bicycle or walk, come on, somebody. If you got responsibility of taking care of your body, then take care of this body. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm just kind of breaking it down for you. Then I'm going to get into the message. He said in verse 24, for our comely parts uh, have no need, but God have tempered the body together. God put the body together. You see, when we, we see when man start playing with human beings in the test tube, you, you got to be careful because, see, man it wants to clone you. Uh -huh. Y'all don't want to say amen. Yes, right, amen. I've I seen people in the street that look like some of y'all in here. I run up beside him and said, is that you? Oh, I'm sorry. You look like Ned. I'm, I'm sorry. You, you look like Sister Tiffany. My bad, I'm sorry, my bad. And you, you can't touch people. You got to walk up to us. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Because there are people that look like you and favor you. Now, you don't know it, but when you start sending in DNA to these companies, you don't know what they're doing with your DNA. Because if they can clone dinosaurs, they can clone human beings. If they can clone sheep and goats, if they can clone chickens, they can clone you. I know it's illegal, but you don't know what they're doing in these buildings. You ever went on the expressway, and you see these big buildings on the side of the expressway, and you wonder, what are all them people doing in that building? It ain't got no name on the building, all them cars out there. You see all these research parking lots? Amen. Amen. Ain't nobody talking to you about nothing when they're doing behind closed doors. Right. See, man is playing Dr. Jekyll. Uh -huh. There's some Dr. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde's up in here, too. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I hope you ain't Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Uh -huh. You can tell when they're Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, they want to operate on you. Come on. And Mr. Hyde, come on, somebody, just want to party all night. My God. He want to self-experiment. I think y'all with me on this. 24 says, for our commonly part, I'm sorry, verse 23 says, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncommonly part have more abundant commonliness. For our commonly parts have no need, but God have tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which it lack. God made your body the way it is. Sometimes we think lipo and suction going to improve things. Come on, somebody. Plastic surgery is going to make you look better. Come on, somebody. People, it's a billion-dollar industry now. Yeah. We're not talking about nickel and dime. We're talking about it's a billion-dollar industry. And people spend all kinds of money to try to get their body, keep their body in shape. Somebody say amen. amen. So the commonly parts in verse 25 said, they should be more, in verse 25 said, that there should be no schism. That's right. Wait a minute now. The word schism means division. If your hand got mad with your face, uh -huh. by nature, your hand won't let you slap your face. No, it won't. But if your hand got mad with your face or your hand got mad with your feet, it won't do no damage. So it shouldn't be any schisms in the church. That's right. Come on, somebody. That's right. You may think, uh, you may think, oh, oh, pastor, you, you ain't right. I know I ain't never been right. What I'm trying to tell you today, don't take your guts for granted. That's right. Don't take your intestines for granted. That's true. Don't take when you go to the bathroom for granted. That's true. Because if your anus close up, uh -huh. you ain't had constipation. No, 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 no. 
Don't y'all look at me like that. Don't take for granted your body which God gave you. You got to regulate your body and take care of the body that God gave you. The same way we got to take care of the church, which is the body of Christ. Amen. Because some people in the church, they act up. They do. They misbehave. I got to close my eye because if I look at somebody, I'm going to say, he must be talking about me. <laughs> look around and somebody say, he is talking about you. Yeah. There are schisms in the church. That's like there are schisms in the body, but it shouldn't be that way. That's what Paul is trying to tell us. If you know you're going to be a problem, then get out of the way. Amen. If you know you're going to have to minister, then move out of the way. Yeah. Schisms. Amen. Manipulators. Master manipulators, use and abuse, should have the same care. The body, in the body, there should be no schism in the church, 25 says, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Look around and somebody and say, I care for you. Don't just look at somebody because they're next to you, because they're family, friend. Look at somebody and say, I care for you. <laughs> but caring mean. It's a verb, it's an action. Amen. Put it into work. Amen. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer Amen. with it. One member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. 27 says, now ye are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Your members in particular. Mm -hmm. This is the fivefold ministry. If you're ever going to start a church, you got to start off with verse 25, 28. And God has set in the church first apostles, mm -hmm. second prophets. Amen. This is the fivefold ministry. Third, teachers. Amen. After that, then the miracles come. That's right. Then after the miracles, then the gifts of, of healing come. Mm -hmm. Then the gifts of helps come. Some people say, Pastor, uh, y'all don't have a lot of ministry here. What can I do? The Bible said, well, just be a help. Amen. Just help somebody in the church. Right. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Then you got the government Amen. and diversities of tongues. You see, tongues is in there as a word and a teaching that is a gift. Amen. Come on, somebody. And there are gifts of the tongue, and there's interpretations of tongue. Yeah, that's right. And the interpretation is for the edifying of the building up of the church. Yeah. It is not of a personal nature, because if you're gifted in speaking in tongues, by all means speak in tongues. Amen. But wherever you speak, it's for either edifying the individual when it's not interpreted, or when it is interpreted, it's for building up the church. Amen. Somebody say amen now. Amen. Amen. So he goes on conclusion says, mm -hmm. and all our apostles, he asked the question. I'm sorry, governments, diversity of tongues, mean variety of tongues. Verse 29 says, and all apostles are all prophets. Are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? No. All of us are not doing that work. But he goes on to say in verse 30, he says, I'm sorry, verse 30 says, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret those tongues? But the key verse here is verse 31. He said, But covet, meaning to desire, I have an earnest need, earnestly, the best gift. And Paul says to the church, I'll show you if you earnestly desire one of these gifts, a helping, speaking in tongues, performing miracles, teaching, prophesying, being an apostle, he said, I'll show unto you a more excellent way. Amen. What is he trying to tell you and I? We're in the body of Christ. Amen. We're one member of another. You might not know it, but we can't do without each other. Amen. We build one another up, and we need to stop trying to tell one another now. There are schisms that can come in if you're not careful. Just like in a natural body, you got a body that God created white blood cell to wall off diseases. And whether it be a common cold or cancer, God can give you those white blood cells and arrange your temperature that can help kill that disease and that virus and that bacteria in your body. Yeah. 
When the enemy come in to attack the member, we got to raise up the praise. We got to raise up the glory of God. We got to magnify God even more. Why is that important? Because we fight back all the schisms in the church. You see, when God says that he's going to do something, he's going to bring it to pass. Y'all believe that this morning? Let me take my time so you understand where I'm coming from. When God says he's going to do something, he's going to bring it to pass. When God told me that you're going to rest on the seventh day, according to the Old Testament scripture, he may rest. My God. Because most people don't realize there are sins that people do ignorantly. And then they're seeing that people do willingly yeah. or presumptuously. Yeah. In other words, you know you're going to do bad, you're doing it willingly. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And I love them to say, oh, I didn't mean to do it. Slap you right upside there. Oh, I didn't mean you do it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But you know how much I love you, but slap you upside the head. Oh, yeah. My God. Willingly because of the meanness spirit. Come on, somebody. Amen. You see, death never suffers to live. Amen. I ain't mad at the world. I'm not mad at South Boston, but the notorious gangster Whitey Bulger. God called to reckoning. Yeah. However he died or whatever he did, he died a pain for death. Yes, Come on, somebody. The Bible says whatever man's soul He's going to reap. Amen. I'm not talking about what the media is talking about. I'm talking about I don't have to be politically correct. Why? Because I'm divine correct. Amen. Come on, somebody. I don't have to be politically correct because I'm inspired to be correct on the word. Amen. It's important that we understand. What are you saying, Pastor? In the scripture, the teachers that, that, that God instructed Moses about presumptuous sin, whether it be strangers or those of the born of the household of faith. When they came out of Egypt into the wilderness, God gave him the Sabbath day to rest upon. And the Bible said, while they were coming through the wilderness, God gave him instruction not to do no work on the Sabbath or the holy day. But the Bible said when they came up out of Egypt and God explained the sacrificial offering of a burnt offering and a presumptuous sin, an ignorant sin, when a man commit a presumptuous sin, a willful sin, he died a death. Because he knew what he was doing. Right. When God said in the Old Testament that man was not to work on the Sabbath day, the Bible said there was a man in the scripture that the Bible don't call by name. But on the Sabbath day, listen to this, he was out picking up sticks. Picking up sticks. Whether he was preparing for a fire or not, he was picking up sticks. And somebody caught him working on the Sabbath day. The Bible said when the people caught him, they brought him to Moses and Aaron and told Moses and Aaron he was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Moses put him in lockdown, and when he went and sought God, you know what God said? Because he disobeyed my law. God said, stone him to death. Look around, somebody said, for picking up sticks? It had nothing to do with picking up a stick. It was what he did on the Sabbath day, knowing presumptuously it was wrong to do what God said not to do. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody said, don't get it twisted. When God said don't do something, leave it alone. You might not understand it now, but when God said obey his stature and keep his commandment, he wants to bless you. That's right. Amen. But presumptuously, this man was stoned to death. And all he did was set president. Today, we got the blue law. The government is cold. Uh -huh. State office is cold, but we got the blue law. Uh -huh. This is the candy belt time of the season. You don't think Halloween is big money? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Them costumes and that candy? Billion dollar business. Come on, somebody. You go ask the candy company. They put it on the shelves. And you got candy Christmas that will last you to Thanksgiving till you get up to Christmas. Amen, that's right. Come on, somebody. Amen, 
You spending money left and right, your credit card is maxed out, and all these toys that they want you to spend and buy, and as the day Christmas is over with, the next day you that evening, instead of the kid playing with the toy, they playing with the box. Amen. So instead of wrapping them up a toy, won't you just wrap them up an empty box? I know y'all don't want to hear that. Because I'm trying to get to something so you understand. When God says something, you see, the Sabbath day was Saturday in the Old Testament. But when we got born again, when Jesus died on the cross and raised from the dead, he gave gifts to all men. So the first day of the week is Sunday. Yes. Amen. Sunday is not the last day. It's the first day. Yes. It's the day we worship and give God praise. And it's set in order the rest of the week. Yes. You don't believe me, go go get a job and work on Saturday night. For those who had last night, a young uh, lady in the booth said to me she had to work last night. And she had to work an extra hour because they pushed the time back. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Work an extra hour and didn't get paid. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me on this? So what are you saying, Pastor? This man got in trouble because when God set in place the Sabbath day, a holy day, he required of you to keep it holy. Amen. But not only is Sunday the first day is holy, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is holy. Amen. Why? Because the world's greatest man made it so. Amen. And who's the world's greatest man? Jesus. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. My God, my God. You see, Jesus oftentimes got in trouble about healing people on the Sabbath day. You know, sometimes you can get in trouble when you're trying to help somebody else. And they don't know you're trying to help them. Stay with me now. Stay with me. <laughs> the Bible said there was a sick man of the pool of Bethsaida. The Bible said he had an infirmary a weakness of affliction in his flesh. Amen. Think about this now. For 38 years. Yes. Everybody said 38 years. 38 years. In, in days, that means for 13,870 days, he had this affliction. Amen. And the Bible said this pool was near the sheep's gate. And everybody that was blind, hoped, everybody that was a paraplegic, Everybody had all kind of foul spirit hung around the pool of Bethesda. And this man been hanging out. Think about this for a minute. Where have you been hanging out for 38 years? Amen. I've been hanging out at the VA for 38. <laughs> I worked 38 years at the VA hospital. Amen. And when I retired, for the first two weeks, I'm getting dressed and getting ready to go to work. I had to remind myself, see, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. See, when you've been programmed to do something a certain way, it's the same way when you study the Word of God and you're programmed and you have a systematic study and a systematic relationship with Christ, you can develop that relationship and when the enemy tries to come in and destroy you, you tell them, I'm serving the world's greatest man. Amen. And God will keep you through all that you're going through. Don't let nobody fool you. Christ is the answer to all your issues. This man with 38 years, 13,000 days, he suffered day in and day out. He was at the pool of Bethesda where the sheep gate was. And every now and then, the Bible said, the angels would come down and get in the water and stir the water up. Now, I don't quite understand how that works, but apparently, whenever the angels stir the water, the first person that put their foot in the water get a healing instantaneous. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would have been hanging around there if I needed it too. But the unique thing about this man, he's been hanging around for 38 years Amen. and can never beat nobody in. Come on, somebody. Amen. You ever seen somebody trying to beat you to something? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Every time you wanted to get there, they got in front of you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You used to get run like an Olympic sprinter. Now you have to watch and have a sure step. You got to watch everywhere you put your feet. That's right. Come on, somebody. It's called the process of time, the aging of time. 
I want you to understand the niceness of what God has done for you and me. He gave us the world's greatest man that we know we're all going to have to live and we're all going to have to die. But the blessing part about what the greatest world the world has ever known, the man that ever known and lived on this planet, is that he gave you eternal life. Look at somebody say, all you got to do is claim it. Y'all say that on one accord. This man was there at the pool and he couldn't even get his feet off the side. Come on, somebody. He couldn't even get his feet out to get in the water and somebody jump in the water and get healed instantly. That's when the angels started the war. And one day, you have to understand something about this. That uh, apparently over the years that Jesus was 33 uh, years of age, somewhere in the ballpark, had observed this man. And for 38 years, this man had off and on trying to get in the water. Even when he got in the water, there was no healing. But one day, yes. one day, right. Jesus showed up. Yes. The world's greatest man. Of all the men that tried to help him get in the water, and all the people that needed to help this man, it was Jesus that showed up. That's right. Somebody said, when you're in trouble, you in trouble, we need the world's greatest man. Greatest man. Come on, somebody. Amen. Jesus asked the man, do you want to be healed? He didn't think about who Jesus was. He, get into, he went into this quick discussion. Every time I, I want to get healed, somebody beat me. My God, y'all don't hear me talking. Every time I want to give God the praise, come on, somebody, somebody beat me to it. I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, if you want to be made whole, then all you got to do is rise up, pick up your bed, and walk. Can you imagine that man saying, wait a minute. You mean all this time, I've been waiting for the angel to stir the water, but the world's greatest man is standing here? And I can get my healing? No longer do I have to wait in line? I'm on the front line? Why? Because he's healed my body. He's healed my mind. You got to thank God for the world's greatest man. It was Jesus that stood in line for you, that paid the price in full. The man got healed instantaneously. No longer carrying that old pallet. How many ever slept on the floor? Come on, somebody. We used to roll out a pallet on the floor. Couldn't afford no mattress and box spring. You got to thank God for that mattress you got. Well, I know it's bouncing and it's springy and it makes noise. I know it's cracking pop, but at least you ain't on the floor. I didn't hear too many amen. You forgot you didn't one time you didn't have no socks, no underwears. Oh, you have to but now you got a drawer full of drawers, socks. Slips, bras, come on somebody. You got a rack full of hat and a rack full of shoes. You had to give God the praise. Why? Because if it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't have what you got. And you worried about your bank account, you wouldn't know you had a bank account if God didn't give you life. Amen. Amen. you done lost your mind. That's right. Because I'm going to tell it to you just like it is so you can live with this. This man was hurting for 38 years. Not 38 minutes, not 38 months. 38 years, 13,870 days went by, but that day was his day. Why? Because he, was, he met the world's greatest man. When you live for yourself, no man can go man born, nobody but Christ. The prophet said, Jeremiah said, is there any bomb in Gilead? Amen. For who? For the sin sick soul. And they cried, there is no bomb. But I'm here to tell you today, in 2018, come on somebody, on this first November, there is some bomb in Gilead. There's a bomb that can heal you from all your diseases. My, my, my. You see, when Jesus did the healing, it was a beautiful thing. But what we need to take into account is that he did it on the Sabbath day. 
Now, wait a minute. What's wrong with doing it on the Sabbath? If somebody needs to be healed or delivered, what's wrong with that? Well, them Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees, they were so full of religion and hypocrisy, they couldn't get past a notion that this man was a son of the living God. Amen. They thought they were great, but they didn't know they were talking to the world's greatest man. Amen. Come on, somebody. When you start having a relationship with the world's greatest man, when you develop that relationship with him day in and day out, when you tell him all about your problems or tell him all about your trouble, when you're going through things face down and you're not sure you're going to get through them, I'm here to tell you, he's who he say he is. And he is a reward of them that diligently seek after him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The Pharisee says, come on. How you get healed? What was his name? He said, I don't know what his name was. I know that I was paralyzed and I couldn't go nowhere. But when he told me to pick up my bed, come on, somebody. I didn't know no better and I just picked it up. Come on, somebody. You see, sometimes you might not understand how God is operating. When God tells you something, just do what God tells you to do. When God said move, you have to move. Sometimes when God said change lane, you have to change lane. Because you got a fool coming up on the wrong side. And you can look at him going past and say, woo, God. I know what I'm talking about. I see it time and time again when God told me to switch lane. I switch and some fool come up the wrong way. My, my, my. The most scribes said, you know what? That man breaking the Sabbath. He's a sinner. Now, how is he healing somebody, delivering somebody, setting somebody free on the Sabbath day? And Jesus got good with them. He told them they want nothing but hypocrites. Come on, somebody. Why? Because this man been suffering for 38 years. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Why do you want to be hurt? Why do you want to be in pain? Why do you want to be destituted? Why do you want to be suffering when you can go to the world's greatest man? Come on, somebody. There are many men that have lived and died, thought they were so intelligent and so smart. They had great leadership. They had plenty of money. And they thought they were great among men. And to some degree, they probably were. But they were the world's greatest man. Because what God has done for you, you ain't got to tell me your testimony. I know God got some testimonies in here. And what he did for you, not yesterday, but what he did this morning. How he brought you over the highways and byways. How he took you around the corner. How the enemy could have been shooting at somebody else and miss you. My, my, my. Can you imagine all them people around the pool said, wait a minute. If Jesus is healing him, I can get my healing too. Yeah. Look at somebody touching by the hand and say, if Jesus can get my healing, I can get my healing too. If Jesus healed a man for 38 years of suffering, how come he can't heal you? Because healing is in the church. Miracles are in the church. Deliverance is in the church. Sanctification is in the church. All we got to do is cry out. Tell me again and say, I receive my healing. In the name of Jesus. See, whatever gift you got, as the Holy Ghost gave you these gifts, is in operation when the Spirit is moving. So when you test somebody, when you test somebody, you don't recognize, but there's a chemical exchange. You don't believe in reach over and test somebody. Just feel over and reach over and touch them by the hand. Ooh, yes. Can't you feel that flesh? Yes, That's that chemical exchange. Yes. That's that power. Yes. That's human being that is alive Amen. and that God is well. Yes. Say, I believe in healing. I believe in deliverance. And God going to unlock, going to unlock my wealth in the name of Jesus. My God, watch the blessing flow. If God can heal the man after 38 years, and he didn't know the world's greatest man was there, and all these 
these other people around the pool that were blind, lame, deaf, dumb, those that were sick and afflicted in their body, they had all kinds of leprosy. How come he can't heal me? And see, that was one incident with the man at Bethsaida. The other was the situation with a leper. And it was on a Sabbath day. And the Bible said, now let me just give you the background before I get into him. If you study the scripture real closely in the book of Leviticus chapter 13, Leviticus chapter 13, starting at verse 44, you can find it and read it when you got a chance. I want to break it down to you. In biblical time when a man had leprosy, listen carefully now. The Bible said if a man had leprosy and it was known, listen carefully, it was an affliction of the flesh and it was contagious. And for you to keep from being afflicted by leprosy, the leper had to walk around with a scarf over his upper lip. Are y'all with me on this? And he had, everywhere he went, he had to say, unclean. Unclean. Everywhere he went, he got to say the word, unclean. Lord have mercy. Look at somebody and say, Lord have mercy. Now that sounds simple, but in biblical time, leprosy could come in its form. It, you could be as white or you could be deformed with all kind of all kind of pus and rising on your flesh. There could be all kind of uh, disarmament on your body. And you can look afflicted. And people who saw you, is when you ever been in a place where you see people afflicted and you look at them, if you ain't never seen them before, you say, my God. But to be leopard in that day and had reddish or brownish or yellowish pus oozing through your flesh, you had to walk through. And the reason why they had to say unclean, so when you looked up, you got out of their way. Amen. Today, people got HIV and AIDS, and they don't say nothing. And to tell you the truth, I thank God for delivering me from marijuana. Reefer. <laughs> Why, that, Pastor? Because when I came along and you rolled your blunt, I'm sorry, I mean, you, rolled, you rolled your stuff. You smoked it. Your saliva got all over the roach. But who you were smoking with, you don't know where they mouth in. Amen. And I seen crackheads smoke with other crackheads. Amen. And if they got HIV and you smoking right behind them, guess what? That germ and that saliva that was on that reefer is on that blood, is on that roach. And you know why I call it a roach? Because it got so small. And when you were high, it looked like a cockroach. <laughs> Are y'all with me on this? Amen. Never mind, never mind. I'm sorry. See, I had, I had smoked so much reefer. I had cockroaches all over the globe. They weren't cockroaches. They were just little, you know. Lord have mercy. All right, this is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit and it also inspire your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts. 
and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize it with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.